Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a regenerative braking system of an electrical vehicle. So in our previous videos we have discussed about different type of electrical vehicles, how it is working, what are the internal constructions and variations so on. And today we are going to see an internal part of an electrical vehicle regenerative braking system. We are going to see what is the regenerative braking system, how it works, what are the internal circuitry of this internal regenerative braking system, how it differs from the conventional braking system of an vehicle. Let us start with what is this regenerative braking system is all about. It is a type of kinetic energy recovery system. So what it means? So when we are decelerating the vehicle or when you are trying to apply a brake to the electrical vehicle, so the kinetic energy whatever available from the vehicle movement needs to be converted into useful energy instead of wasting it in as a heat energy in the conventional system. So this process of converting this kinetic energy of the electrical vehicle into electrical energy is called as a regenerative braking system. So what will happen by doing this? By doing this we can recover certain amount of electrical energy and store it in the battery system so that the fuel efficiency can be increased and also the breaking down process also can be done. So these systems are also called as kinetic energy recovery system as I told you earlier. There are multiple methods of energy conversion in regenerative braking systems including spring, flywheels, electromagnetic and hydraulic recently and electromagnetic flywheel hybrid RBS has emerged as well. Electric regenerative braking means a braking system which during a deceleration provides for the conversion of vehicle kinetic energy into electrical energy. This is what I have explained little earlier. So we need to convert the kinetic energy of the vehicle movement into electrical energy during braking process. So this is done in VEVs by the means of using electrical motor as a generator during braking as shown in figure below. So you can see when the vehicle is running forward and the battery supplies the electrical energy and the motor produces the mechanical torque and the wheel propels so that the vehicle moves. And when you want to apply a brake, the deceleration time, the kinetic energy of the vehicle is fed to the generator and the generator produces the electrical energy and we have some power electronic components to convert this uh, variable energy into a fixed amount of voltages to store in the battery system. So this is a simple introduction for regenerative braking system. So in conventional braking system what happens actually? So in a conventional system the IC engine produces the <coughs> energy and this energy is transmitted through transmission and all those things and the vehicle propels and when you want to apply a brake we are going to use a mechanical arrangement to apply the brake so that the kinetic energy of the vehicle is converted into heat energy and it is being mostly wasted. So this wastage needs to be uh, removed. So in a regenerative braking system in the electrical vehicle so what is going to happen is during the braking time, the deceleration or the kinetic energy is going to be fed to the generator set. So the generator is going to produce the electrical energy and which will be con con you know, fed to the power electronic components which will convert this AC uh, output or a variable AC output into fixed DC so that it can be charged in the high voltage battery of an electrical vehicle. So we can see here in a conventional system what happens during normal braking what happens the total braking torque is fed from generative braking torque so this is for the uh, you know the generative braking torque. So we, we have a two braking mechanisms in the electrical vehicles so we have friction braking as well as generative braking torque so in a normal braking mode where there is no emergency or a sudden stop is required. So this time what is going to happen the kinetic energy is going to be converted into electrical energy 
and the 100 percent of the kinetic energy will be converted into electrical energy and all the breaking torque is coming from generative breaking torque method. Now the friction breaking torque is less. When you need a sudden break or when you want to stop fully, that time what is going to happen? So the regenerative breaking torque is going to be zero and friction breaking torque is going to be applied. So this friction breaking torque which we apply through the mechanical devices, so which is going to stop the uh, vehicle movement. So this time there is no electricity produced from the uh, generative braking method. So how this powertronic circuit works inside this regenerative system? So here I have given a sample circuit diagram where we have the AC power source coming from the utility and will be fed to the charger unit and from the charger unit it will be fed to the batteries and then it will uh, work to the go to the motor. So here what is going to be the case the supply is coming from here and I have a, a rectifier unit three phase rectifier unit which will feed this AC into DC convert this one and will be kept it here and then from here it will be converted again to AC to <coughs> DC to AC. So here it is going to be a variable a frequency AC supply so that we can increase the speed of the motor here if it is a AC motor so it will be of a DC to AC converter in case if it is a DC motor BLDC type of motor so only the switching will be taking place so that the supply will be given to this BLDC type of motor and this is the motoring period so in this time period so here this regenerative braking unit will be isolated there will not be any connection to this and there will not be any action taking place by this regenerative braking unit. So when you want to apply the brake, so what is going to happen? So here the switching process will be given to this regenerative braking unit. So the supply will be coming from the motor. Now the motor will be acting as a generator. So the energy will be produced from the generator and will be fed to this, fed to this AC2 a DC converter unit here. So this DC converter unit will be feeding this back to the source or it will be fed to the battery unit. So this is a sample circuit. So this is not the exact one. So I will show you the exact one what is used in the EVs. So just for understanding how the process is taking place. So first the AC supply is converted into DC by using a rectifier unit and there is a filters and then this DC unit DC supply will be fed to this variable frequency drive. So this variable frequency drive is going to drive this uh, motor, CSM uh, SM motor, permanent magnet, uh, synchronous motor and then during the braking time, so what is going to happen, this is going to work as a generator and will be feeding the energy back and that time it is going to uh, get the uh, signals for the regenerative braking units. So, so the switches will be getting the signals in sequence so that it can convert this energy whatever is coming from here suitable to the uh, you know battery which you need to be stored here okay so this is how the system works <coughs> so if the evs are running at high speed the instantaneous braking power for the motor would be very big so in a conventional PEVs, the batteries are controlled to absorb this energy. So when we are applying a brake, when the vehicle is running uh, very high speed, it is going to produce a high energy and this high energy if you are directly giving to the batteries, so it will uh, rise the temperature of these uh, batteries and which will lead to reduce the lifespan of the battery and sometimes it may explode as well. So this instantaneous or sudden high power which is coming from the electrical vehicle during braking, high speed uh, braking time which we cannot directly fit to the electrical uh, batteries. So we need to have an alternate solution so that which can observe this sudden uh, high power and then later once it is normal then we can store it to the batteries. So we use two different mechanisms to uh, achieve this target. So one is ultra capacitor by its nature it has the capability of observing large current and it is suitable for this 
application. So ultra ultra capacitors will be useful when to observe the sudden high power or high current. And once it is normalized or regulated, then the power can be transferred to the batteries. So we have a system here where we can see the hybrid power system, uh, where we have the battery as well as the <coughs> ultra capacitors, and the battery is directly connected to the motor generator set to the uh, power electronic devices and for ultra capacitor we have a buck boost converter here so because the buck boost converter uh, this energy whatever we are getting from here needs to be regulated before it is going to the ultra capacitors and the battery will be storing the energy once the speed is uh, normal not sudden high current once it is normal then it can uh, take the current from the uh, you know, power chronic controller or motor controller from here. The uses uh, serves as the auxiliary energy system and the batteries which serves as the main energy system directly connected to the load through a DC bus. Uses is something but ultra capacitors are connected to the DC bus via bi-direction bug boost converter so which is nothing but a DC to DC converter so which has two power switches and one inductor to suppress the sudden change in current. In the proposed scheme, the UCs, that is ultra capacitors are assigned as an auxiliary power source due to their capability of handling large instantaneous power input and output. So this is very important. So sudden increase in the speed or sudden uh, deceleration time, we, we have to give sudden power for the device to sudden acceleration or sudden deceleration time the power which is coming from the uh, vehicle which needs to be stored so both of them require a sudden uh, power a sudden instantaneous high power so for this purpose only we are using this ultra capacitors so the ultra capacitors are installed at the DC to DC converter because it cannot provide consistent power output so the internal circuitry will be looks like this where we have a battery here so we have high speed circuit breaker here and we have fuse and then we have a regulator here and then we have a ultra capacitors here which is connected in series and we have a buck boost converter here to <coughs> charging process of the uh, ultra capacitor as well as the discharging process of this ultra uh, capacitors and we have a motor control here so this motor control can be of different type so based upon the type of motor, if it is a three phase uh, permanent magnet synchronous motor then it could be of a three phase uh, inverter com converter or if it is a BLDC type of motor then the converter can be a different type as well. So during, <coughs> during the deceleration or during the braking time when the brake is applied, when the car is running at a very high speed, when the brake is applied, so the power which is generated from the kinetic energy of the electrical vehicle will be very high, so which needs to be suppressed or which needs to be observed by this ultra capacitor. So the first stage of observing this uh, power surge or power high power from the uh, vehicle will be given to this ultra capacitor. So during this process, during the deceleration or braking process, the first step is to Actuate this at T double one power devices, and through uh, through this, what is going to happen? The current is going to be flow through this ultra capacitor, and it is going to charge this ultra capacitor. So this is the first stage. By this time, here the high speed circuit breaker will be in open state, so that no power will be flowing to the batteries. And in the second stage, what happens once it is uh, become regular and the uh, current is, you know, not very high and when it is made a, a constant value or when it is in the medium stage, so what happens now? Actually, here this T double one will be switched off and this K one high speed circuit breaker will be closed so that now the energy whichever is coming from the motor can be fed to these batteries. So this is not an emergency case. This is a normal deceleration time. 
So this is what happens. So we, we want to reduce the speed actually a little bit or we want to uh, slow down the car only for that purpose. It is not an emergency. We, we must understand this. So this first step and second step where we are having the ultra capacitor and then the battery operation individually. So this is not an emergency case. It is only a deceleration time. So when you want to stop the vehicle immediately, that time what happens here, the current flow goes through both the path. So we are closing this T double one as well as A1 so that the current will be flowing through the ultra capacitor as well as to the battery. So the current flow will be very high and then it will decelerate very fast. Also when this period is happening, so when you want a sudden uh, stop, you know that time also the mechanical brakes also will be applied. So it is a combination of electrical brake as well as the mechanical brake. So the electrical brake where we uh, we are going to apply only when there is no emergency <coughs> so that the power can be retrieved. In, in, in case of emergency or in case of any uh, sudden stop required, so that time we are going to apply both methods so that it can effectively stop the vehicle compared to the conventional braking system. And also it is uh, delivering or it is retrieving certain amount of electrical energy to the batteries. So what are the advantages? It is very clear the improved electrical range because we are taking back certain amount of electrical energy from the uh, braking so that it can store certain amount of energy in the battery so that it can extend the uh, range. Dual action safety because it is having the frictional braking system as well as the regenerative braking system so it can stop the vehicle very fast and uh, also it can uh, reduce the wear and tear on the frictional brake system and also it is reducing the uh, you know the losses because of the frictional brakes. Disadvantages, adva additional devices are necessary to operate the regenerative braking thus increasing the vehicle cost. So we know that we, we need a, a power electronic devices which need to convert the electrical and the mechanical energy into uh, you know the generator will be converting that uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy and then it needs to be converted into constant DC so this needs extra extra devices. High maintenance cost and conventional braking requires more attention depending on the level of regeneration braking. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of this regenerative braking system. Hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment box. 